Hey, what's your problem? You have business problems? We have business solutions. Well, maybe. Life is a fight. It is. In business, every day is a fight. So, hey, what's your problem? Yes, thank you, John David Wells, as my watch gets all caught up in the mic arm here. I'm not sure if you heard that thudding around. Check out JD. He's at the Wells Report on Facebook. He's the one who does the voiceover for this illustrious show. This is the What's Your Problem podcast, a Middle Tennessee business-based podcast for business owners and professionals all around the area who uh, are dealing with the thing, that, that one thing that's always something keeping us up at night. And we tend to talk about that amongst a host of other things. This is a video and audio podcast. Pick your poison, check us out, give us a rating at whatsyourproblempodcast.com. I am your host, Jim McCarthy, with JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. And today, another B&I member and returning guest, Mrs. Ashley Bright. I almost called you a Ms. there. Could That's you pick fine. up on that? I would have gone with it. You, know, you would have you gone with yeah, it? Yeah, it would have made me feel kind of like young and free. Really? <laughs> you don't feel like that already? <laughs> I mean, you're not even like 22 yet, are you? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, let's go with that. Uh, yeah, just 21. So Ashley was on a uh, previous podcast episode. I always, if I have you on again, it's for a good reason. It's because you bring a lot to the table, and we had a good conversation beforehand. So. I thought it was because we needed a do-over because it was so bad. No. You no, know, maybe she's had some time. No. She's got better thoughts this time. No. Okay. No, so you're, you really starting off on a strong foot. I brought on the uh, the notion of ratings for a reason. That's what you help businesses get is uh, good reviews <laughs> right. and ratings. That's one of the things that you do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but before we get into everything else, of course, what do we do? It's called the Random Five. Brought to you by It's Your Show Co. If you want a podcast like this where we have video clips, audio, all the production. You could have us involved as little or as, as much as you like. Let us know. It's your show.co. A stumbling buffoon of a podcast host. You can have that too. All right. The random five are five random questions. You're familiar with that from the last time, right? Yeah, I forgot about it though. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It out of my mind. <laughs> was, it, was it that traumatic? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number one. Okay. What wrong assumptions do people make about you? Oh, that's an easy one. That's a good one. They think I'm mean and scary. But I'm not. You're not, but you, I can, I maybe it's can fine. I got the RBI. see that. Yeah. You really do. I'm I glad know. you said that. I know. It's <clears> fine. <throat> it's fine. We can yeah. call it what it is. I can't fix it. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. But you're going to have uh, really good skin as a result of it. That's right. Right? That's right. That's really what I'm going RBF. for. RBF. That's funny. <laughs> Okay, number two, what's the most fun place around where you live? Or where is it? Okay, the most fun place around where I live? Um, hmm, I'd say our backyard. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. I would agree our backyard has become like that for us. Yeah, that's where we hang fun out. Fun place to watch football, have a couple of brews. Yeah. <clears throat> Question number three, uh, have you ever joined any meetup groups? Have you? I mean, really? It, it's an actual question. A meetup group? Yeah. I guess B&I would be a qualifier. We meet yeah. up every single week. We sure do. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Like a just, yeah. yeah. So I have. And I've done other other types of those, you know, in the social media, digital marketing world. You know, they can get a little Dorky. trite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Trite. Mm. Your, your word selection is so much better than mine. I called it dorky. You're like <laughs> They're trite. They're dorky too. <laughs> yeah, we're, not tree- we're not cheap. We're <laughs> thrifty. Yeah. That's right. uh, okay, question number four. Where would your friends or family be most surprised to find you? Um, such a good question. Maybe at like um so surprised. A bowling alley. No, I, I like a bowling alley. Where would um, be a surprising maybe like a party alone? <laughs> No, I would like to go to a party alone because then I wouldn't have to talk to anybody. I could just sit in the corner. <laughs> With your RBF. Yes, and people watch. I'm and then, all about it. And then gauge their reactions That's to you. Right. You're That's like, right. that person totally thinks I am a biatch right yeah. now. I used to do that in college, though. Like, Did sit you? in the cafeteria and eat lunch alone. <laughs> Glare and just at people? Watch. Yeah. 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 My husband, before we were together, he <clears> told <throat> me, he was like, that actually, that's not. That's what did it for him. Well, he was like, that's special about you, but um, it's not normal. And I said, don't care. Right. Don't care. That's it. That's who. Uh, this is who you're getting. Yep. You know, 
dare I say, in bed with. I mean, yeah. not metaphorically, but, you know, literally as well. True. Question number five, uh, what's expensive but totally worth it? Expensive but totally worth it. Jeep life. Well, the Jeep, <laughs> yes. The Jeep is expensive and totally worth it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the Jeep counts, but also um, like tech gadgets, which I feel like you're you're a supporter of here. Uh, gadgets that I get, you know. Yeah. If I get into gadgetry too much, it becomes, uh, it can get a little overwhelming. Yeah. Like over there, I've got a drone in a yellow box. That's an FPV drone that mm-hmm. I've flown uh, a handful of times. Yeah. And um, there's a lot to do. Like if you put it in manual mode, that thing will go 100 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you like, really have to practice. I have a drone. Why? Do you? Because tech, gadgets. Why not? Fun. Yeah, right. exactly. And it helps business to a certain extent if you use the, you know. Well, that's how I justified it in my mind. Exactly. It's just a toy. You got to get the Part 107 license, though, which uh, is important. Yeah. So we're discussing meetup groups, aside from what are their kind of trite <laughs> meetup groups that you were part of? <laughs> None currently, because BNI is the one that is the most worth the time. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So people in the same genre as you, that, that kind of get together to do a, a, a mind meld of sorts and talk about all things digital marketing, because that's what you encompass. That's mm-hmm. what your, your your company does. Forward digital marketing, uh, at least in the in the, the B&I sense, what you talk about every week is about uh, businesses that can get, you know, they, they you can get coaching them on how to get good reviews, right? Right. And you've been very successful at that. Yep. But you're also helping people with the strategy behind social media mm-hmm. posting, what to post, what kind of hashtags, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. And overall communications. That's where I need. I mean, I don't know if I'm getting murdered on social media, but I try to put out a clip or two a week yeah. from this podcast, which, you know, everything's on my shoulders producing everything, including my, my client stuff. Yeah. But I mean, is that something you can help me with? As well. That's my problem. So... I'm always, always about asking a clarifying question. Right. What is the core problem? Is it the, just the sheer getting it done, getting it posted? Is it, you want different engagement from it? You want better reach from it? You know, everybody, there's different goals for different, for yeah. different, uh, you know, and you, My I mean, challenge, you, you know, as well as anybody. Else. As the podcast grows, you know, I'm seeing more, and you know, I plug it every week that we're in BNI. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell people to listen. I have BNI members on, and I mean, it literally is like in BNI. What we do is uh, they they have uh, several different KPIs. One of them being one to ones, not just in the meeting in the chapter meeting every week, but you know, they encourage you to have one to ones with each of the member every week. I'm not telling you; I'm telling the audience mm-hmm. in general. Um, I need the reminder too. Right. And it's, it really does, you know, you got to remember the basics. This is how you build a business with relationships and learning about each other's business. Okay. How, what's the easiest way for me to find referrals for you? You know, and answering that question, what's the tip of the spear? What's the conversation starter of what that particular person does? Uh, but with a, um, I don't know how that thing came on. Phone is ringing in the middle of my thing here. Hold it's on. a good ring, too. Though. It is. It's a funny noise. Uh, but the one-to-ones are are what I, on the podcast, I qualified. I'm like, guys, if you listen to the podcast with the BNI members, it's like you're finding out more about not only my business, but their business. So yeah. it kind of sort of counts like a one-to-one. We'll kind of see the gray area there. Um So that's kind of what, you know, we, we do in the podcast. So for me... Uh, it, it, the podcast has become more popular within the group, mm-hmm. and I don't think I've heard more adulation today than people. I didn't realize, you know, half the people that told me they listen to the podcast actually listen. Yeah, and then they they come up and tell me what they heard, and it's, it's legitimate. I'm going, oh wow, which is good feedback for you. That is too, right, like but to, what's sticking with people? You know, you're moving in the right direction, but to get that same engagement on social media oh, posts, yeah, right. you know, people commenting and engaging. You know that I. My philosophy on that recently is that the engagement piece was something that we focused on and talked a lot about um, in years past, especially in f- in the Facebook world. But I think in in recent years, there's just people aren't using it that way right. as much as they used to. Mm-hmm. It is more of a consumption feed, you mm-hmm. know, and so and which is case in point of what you're seeing playing out is that people are consuming it. But not telling you digitally that they're consuming it, right? 
um, unless you ask for something really specific from them, whether it's a sign up for an email, you know, newsletter, because they're going to get something from that, some sort of, you know, sheer value or, you know, oftentimes you'll see people, you'll see brands running, um, uh, you know, contests on Instagram to try and, you know, boost that and cross promote other brands with them. Mm -hmm. Um, but unless there's something that somebody's going to get, like, so, and when I say somebody, um, I'm talking about the consumer, unless that consumer is going to get something from it. I, you just, I just by and large don't see a lot of engagement in the way that we measured it you know, in earlier years of, of likes and comments and whatnot, it really becomes more of the um, branding exercise overall, um, which is really hard to quantify, you know, um, and give, and give, you know, um, specific benchmarks on, but your impressions and your reach is something that I guide people more towards um, in recent times. That's a bigger class. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a more important part of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my recent, I'm looking at my feed right now. This is like, this is all about me, you know. Um, it's your show. It is my show. <laughs> don't ever, don't ever forget that. <laughs> so the last one I put up as a clip was yeah. uh, the teaching invites new ideas with Mr. Mr. Brother Paul Brown. And, and which, I thought, which platform are you looking at? Instagram. Okay. And I've, I, pro, I post it from a What's Your Problem podcast Instagram account. Okay. And then I uh, invite myself on my personal account as a collaborator. Yeah. So it doubles it out. Yep. And of course, I've got bigger following on my personal account than I do on the podcast account. It just gets more widespread appeal. Mm -hmm. But I think, uh, you know, I'll, I'll admit that at one point I might have bought my followers. And I bet Instagram holds that against me. No, there's no, there's no way to know, but, yeah. but you can almost <clears throat> guarantee yourself that those are not quality followers. No, no, they're all bots. It was, yeah. it felt good at the time and it wasn't that expensive. You got the dopamine hit. I, I regret it. You know, <laughs> now you're crashing. Eh, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, on TikTok, on the other hand, as I'm looking at this, uh, yeah, teaching invites ideas, 256 views. When I had Mr. Brad Lee on, he got 105,000 views. Yeah. Because he talked about something that was of interest and like almost 95 comments. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the organic reach there. Yeah. Is. My actual take voiceover thing that I did with the Toyota yeah. spot. I watched that. That yeah. was fun. But see, I didn't, I didn't engage with it. Yeah. A lot of the people, you didn't, you, have, I, see, you watched it. It was, I, it was entertaining. It right? was. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people got on there and said, good job, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you, I put that out there and I guess over time to put it out there again and again and again mm -hmm. with different instances I would assume over time would build interest in what I can do for Correct. other people. Yes. You know, it's branding exercise. It is. Yep. It is. So, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think I'm heading in the right direction. You I'm are. just impatient. Well, and, but I mean, you, you've been the one to say before that if you're starting a podcast, mm -hmm. it's not an overnight thing, right? Yeah, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say that, you know, the, the same is true for any brand, any brands, social media strategy in that branding sense, it's, you, you're not going to see, you're not going to see like, boom, yeah. the world has changed in three months, six months. It's a long game. And you talk about, you know, having that offer, that thing to give away. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is for me. I mean, I guess it's just hopefully uh, entertaining business value yeah. that other middle Tennessee business owners can learn from. Uh, and apply to their business with some of the guests, some of the observations we make, the deep dives, that kind of thing, yeah. rabbit trails. Um, also, the Californians moving in. Mm -hmm. You know, I've also put I've I've put it out. You know, hey guys, here's a real grassroots Tennessee business. Mm -hmm. If you're moving here, you want to learn more about you know Middle Tennessee business because I mean I think it's one of the most robust, active entrepreneurial epicenters in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. Nashville, it is Middle Tennessee. It's amazing. It is. So um, tell me how the last time we ended up, we talked about a little bit of an opportunity that you had down in the Keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. did talk about that. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was your favorite family vacation yeah, place? Yeah, It's a sad story, Jim. Oh, no. um, we got down there and this place, which shall not be named unless you go back and watch this other episode. Right. Um, you know, we'd gone, I don't know if it was, it was like our eighth year as a family going down there back yeah. in May. And um, our two units, we had two units. They weren't right next to each other. There was an end unit, which had my parents and my grandparents and one of my siblings. Mm -hmm. And then there was a unit between us. And then my husband and I had one um, with 
the us and our two kids and then another one of my siblings stayed with us and the the units were overrun with cockroaches really? and i know it's florida right? yeah. and you you're bound to see two five ten roaches i don't know i'd be fine up to like maybe 15 roaches i don't know it's florida right uh, Aren't they call, they're called water bugs exactly down there but we had never seen them down there really at all maybe once or twice like one or two mm -hmm. but this was like i mean you know you're cooking you're cooking dinner in the oven right and in the oven there is you've got the the clock panel right mm -hmm. yeah and there must be a space between like the two panels or whatever but we we're looking at the time to see when something was done and there's a roach running behind like inside the unit it is inside yeah the oven mm -hmm. and it's running it's running over the time, you know, so there's like a roach in, in, the, in the way of us uh, seeing the time. Um, and so we we're tapping on it to get it to keep going. <clears throat> I mean, if you've got like roaches in the panels of your oven, like you're, you're really overrun. You know? <laughs> so was um, it more of a complaint that you made that you couldn't tell the time or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the main problem is we couldn't the, the see when our French fries were done. <laughs> we're okay, but it's when we tried to find out what time it was. Exactly. You know, no, so it was, this sucker just kept on getting in, fr in front of the, the eight. Yeah. You know? So is it a six or an eight? Right. Or is it six o'clock or seven for know. crying out loud? Yeah. So anyway, it was a disappointing experience in that, re in that regard um, because it was just absolutely infested. And there seems to be this one particular building on, on the campus that, that has this problem. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we had kind of a bummer, bummer of a vacation. And so when we talked, when you and I talked, I was going to pitch them for um, managing their reviews. Yeah. But I mean, can't fix that like it, that's just you know and if that spreads to all of them that's just and, and again it wasn't like a it wasn't a as you would normally see it in uh in florida type of situation it right was, it was ex excessive it was impressive wow yeah. so did you i guess you did complain to them yeah my dad were did. they receptive yeah they gave us you know they they weren't surprised let's put it that way oh, they knew okay. it was a problem um and they came in and they had even like given us new coffee pots because there were babies like all in the coffee pot oh when we go to make coffee in the morning. Um, yeah, it was, it was really, it was quite the thing. Um, so it just basically, it was such a horrible experience. You don't even want to revisit it. Well, that's the thing is I don't want to, yeah, well, I don't know. If, maybe if we go back, I don't know. We're starting to talk as a family. We're going to do it. We're not right. going to do it. We don't know. Um, There's if, plenty of places down there. There are. That's the thing is maybe we try somewhere new. You know, the, the but, place where my wife and I went. Yeah. Where'd you guys stay? Was it Hawks? Mirabella? Or, Mir okay. Isla Bella. That's the name of it. Okay. Right um, down the road. It's right on the yeah. uh, the edge of the Seven Mile Bridge. Yeah. And we've, we have we have looked at that place online. So we're thinking, mm -hmm. you know, or do we like do an Airbnb house or something? I don't know. So we're thinking about it. Um, but... You know, when it comes to managing reviews, if you know there's kind of an uncontrollable problem, that's not something I want to be part of. Right, right. There's only so much I can help you. Exactly. If you're not can, willing to fix what's broken on the inside. Yeah. I can yeah. only massage the messaging so much. Right. So with something that I, do you do email campaigns and stuff like that too? Because mm -hmm. I think that might be something I might want to, I guess... Whenever I put out an episode, all yeah. the previous well, guests. That's what I was going to ask you is, right. are you doing any sort of no. like, because I see your stuff on social media occasionally, <laughs> um, probably on Instagram. And you're lurking. Anywhere. You're not even commenting. I'm a lurker. Liking. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. When it comes to my personal stuff, I'm total like just in the background lurker, like to watch, you know. and Study. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you had an email pop that went out every time, um, and it's just short and sweet too, it's not much people have to read, but it just puts a bug in their, oh, bugs. Now I'm on a bug theme. Oh my God. It puts a bug in their ear that, mm -hmm. you know, they, need, they pop that on and listen to it in the car or whatever. Might be of interest. You never mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But see, the, and the other thing is, is when I see um, the clips, you know, you, you've got these catchy clips um, and you can see the nugget, right? Like you, yeah. get, the, you get the nugget on, on, on social media. Um, but I haven't admittedly gone now to Spotify and pulled the whole thing. Right. The way I, the, my, the strategy on the clips is you put enough of them out, mm -hmm. people start formulating a theme, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, it could be something where I poke fun at myself. Maybe I go off on a rant. Maybe my guest goes off on a tangent, that kind of thing, whatever there might be value mm -hmm. when it comes to 
business and just relationship building, culture building, anything yeah. like that with, with employees. Um, if we put it out there, they get a feel. Hopefully yeah. they like me as the host because I'm the common denominator. Right. In the whole thing. They get to uh, know and like you and trust right. you, right? And they see that it's a different enough podcast. It's not really, it's it's in person. It's, you know, the cameras are fly in the wall. Another bug reference. <laughs> you know, type of approach where it's similar to Howard Stern and what he does. Even Joe Rogan does. The camera's just watching the events. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm talking into a camera like on CNN, you know? Right. So with that kind of styling, I thought, well, if I put that out enough and enough at, at scale mm -hmm. with, you know, it should create some sort of interest that, okay, I'll give you an hour of my time. Yeah. You know, for the people, that's the idea. Yeah. So and if you followed time. up with that with really direct email hits, right? you probably would get more, uh, more playthroughs. Yeah. I mean, I, I would imagine uh, building a robust Californian audience would be a good idea. Because, I mean, a lot of people, they, they all want to know mm -hmm. about where they're moving to. Mm -hmm. So, brilliantly, uh, there's a guy here, a realtor. His name is Matt Bogosi, and I'm gonna think I'm going to have him on this Friday or next Friday. I can't remember. Um, but he does an amazing job at branding himself as the go-to guy for Californians moving in. He's got his Facebook page called Moving to Tennessee. You know, for people, not only from California, it could be from anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but he's capitalized on that. And I really want to deep dive with him on this. Mm -hmm. Like, how's it working out? What do the numbers look like? Because I'm like, why wouldn't any realtor, any business owner create their own page? Yeah. You know, last I checked, there was about 22 pages based on people moving to Tennessee from California yeah. with thousands of members, yeah. thousands of them. That's both wonderful and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It is, but you know what can you do? It's gonna happen. You might as well, you know, embrace it. Yeah, embrace Capitalize it. Capitalize on it. Be happy the fact that we're living in an area that's attractive. Yeah, it's a rising tide. Hopefully, somewhat insulated from the economic calamities that are about to befall us if they do. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing to be. It's a good position to be in. It is. I think. It is. So moving forward, um, forward. There Noble. you go. There well, we go. There it, yep. You've always done, you've centered around the, the reviews, the email campaigns, social mm -hmm. media management. Mm -hmm. Are there any social media accounts you come across that are just like, dude, what are you doing? Mm, yeah, some yeah. of them. Well, like, Those who shall not be named. They don't or do name you mean them, like I mean, pros scenarios. prospects that come to me that I, that I kind of push to the side? Or just when I'm out there doing my lurking? Yeah, you're lurking and, you know, maybe you get... You gotta polish a turd every now uh -huh, and then. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten really selective on the ones that I take on yeah. um, for a variety of reasons. But you know, when I'm out there lurking, um, oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's I haven't recently found any that are just like egregious, right? Um, but there are some. There, are, there are a few that have come my way. In the last six months that I've that I've just thought, you know, mm, what do you think of like out. the uh, the know it all gurus that, you know, are constantly out there be like, you know, last month I made forty thousand dollars sitting from my couch, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the old Don LaPree approach, right? I, I think I think there's a little bit of a sham there, you know. It's Is like it, but you know, it's like it's it's like the Val pack of marketing. So yeah. it's got to be working. Because for some people it yeah. is. You know, I think there's a kernel of truth in a lot of it. Um, but it, I, you know, and it, when you're in the marketing sphere, I think you end up becoming the um, the target for a lot of these ads that pop up anyway. Yeah. Um, that are of that type where you you know. Oh, I made a hundred grand doing X, Y, and Z, you know, and it's easy. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Right. And it's kind of here's that. the here's the funnel into my course. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. I'm doing so well. Uh -huh. I just want to be benevolent and teach everybody else yes. yeah. for a lofty price. Yeah. So those lead magnets, you know, that they, they can become trite, as it were. And that's where that's where social media and digital marketers become trite. And you when you find yourself in a room with them, either a digital room or a physical room of everybody that's in that kind of same mindset mm -hmm. or attempting mindset. That's where it, it's just, it's overwhelming, which is, you know, back to my original point in the beginning of why I only do BNI for meetups and networking. It's, I find it much more helpful to find a lot of different and why I don't, this is also why I don't um, pigeonhole myself in one single vertical either. The, 
the crossover from industry to industry or business to business is is really helpful to me in just keeping sharp and understanding what what businesses are up against when they're trying to communicate their story online. Um, so that's like a really roundabout answer. Um, What's the biggest thing a business needs to understand or a business owner needs to understand getting into digital marketing? That it's not a, um, oh, I think the biggest thing is probably, you know, a little bit what we touched on earlier is that it's not a, it's not a short game. Right. It's a long game and it's for a lot of, for a lot of small businesses, it's a branding game. Mm-hmm. It is a keeping yourself <clears throat> alive and well on social media, you know, so that people have a place where they can go and, um, you know, like you were saying earlier, you know, they can get a feel for the brand or the business owner or the product or the service, you know, and, and have some sort of a familiarity of it long before they come to the transaction. Yeah. You know? And And so, but I think a lot of people confuse advertising and lead generation with marketing efforts and communication efforts. Because this is a, it's a push marketing platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, you got to push your content out there. Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean people have to watch it. So the repetition, the frequency, similar to radio, that was what won uh, people over time. But that was a pull mechanism where you just happen to be listening to the radio and by chance you'd hear an ad come on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe the first couple, it could be the 10, 15, 20 times you hear it, you don't really pay much attention to it. In my experience, when I worked for radio, part of my job was to write the ad in such a way that uh, it surprised Broca, which is Broca's part of the brain that filters out a myriad of messages throughout mm-hmm. the day, thousands of them. And I, I called it a look at your radio moment. If I can come out of the box with a concept or a phrase or a sentence that made you go, what? That yeah. means I got your attention. Yeah, that first hook. Um, you know, and a lot of people will be like, attention, realtors. <sighs> yeah, you're okay. so good at that, though. Right. Well, I've read those lines so many times in my career, but uh, my my, I always knew that you, the well, the better crafted the message, the more you're going to swing that hammer. And of course, if you pump it up with rep, with repetition and frequency, mm-hmm. it's just going to be so much more salient that yeah. way. Um, that's where I think a lot of people miss the mark, including myself, because I'm in. I'm, well, it's hard I'm to keep up. It's hard to keep up with regularly, mm-hmm. um, especially when you're continually crafting a very specific message, right? right. Um, it's easier for some like service-based businesses, I think, you know, where there's not, there's there's a little bit of a repetition that needs to happen just in the fact that we're here, we're doing quality work for quality people week in and week out, right? Yeah. And so that's something that they need to represent on social media. Um, and I think the more they can do it with their own face and their own regular human representatives, the better for yeah. those types of brands, um, but when you're when you're building something like you are, and you're and you're trying to hook people's interests with every repetition, um, that that takes a lot of brain juice. Even with BNI, BNI almost teaches people oh, the, yeah. the best way because in that chapter, in every BNI chapter, you're going to have members that go first. They tell their commercials. They've typically got anywhere from 35 to 45 to some chapters, depending on their size, 60 seconds uh, to do their quote unquote commercial. Um, and it's, it speaks my language because I equate it to, you know, well, do I have to be here every week? Well, it's people aren't going to get your message once. Mm-hmm. Uh, you showing up every week if you decide to join is like having a billboard up mm-hmm. to, you know, in our case, 60 people plus every single week that, you know, if it's crafted right, if the tip of the spear um, conversation starting sentiment and uh, concept is good. It'll hopefully get you business because out of those 60 people, there's going to be, you know, maybe four or five of them that go, I know somebody. Yeah. You know, well, and the really specific ask too, right? That's yeah. when you can sprinkle those in. I think those, you know, and those are kind of hard to keep up with. Sometimes you can't though. That's yeah. tough. But I mean, in your case, you could see a review and know yeah. f- for certain that you like the brand and yeah. be like, this, these reviews don't reflect this brand or this business. Yeah. You're 100% I know right. these guys. Yeah. You know, my, you know, I, back to the, you know, 
some of the chapters have the, up to you know a minute for their commercials. I'm almost glad that we don't because yeah. it makes you forces you. Yeah, ha- you have to get better. And I was thinking about mine this morning because it was not it was not good, um, and I've not been in a habit of writing good 40 second pitches. Mm-hmm. Partially because I was I was on the leadership team last year, and so I kind of just tabled mine. You know, I was like, I can I can only we can we, we can all make excuses. Yeah, it's fine. It's an excuse. It is what it is. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah, but you know, the chapter's finances were kept up. That's all. I That's use. right. And you know, when you put a words person in the finances part, like you, yeah, it's right brain. Just, just yeah, yeah, we were asking a lot of me for a whole <laughs> year. <laughs> So now that that's over and, you know, the chapter stayed afloat, mm-hmm. we're not in the red, we're in the green, handed no. it off to Tom Law. I said, go run with it. But I would agree. Uh, you make a really good point. That now I have to focus on it more. And you, you have to like write it before you get there, though. You do. Um, and I've actually coached people on that, that, um, well, I'm not, I'm not getting any referrals. Okay. Well, you got to dig down. It's not up to us to interpret what you do. Mm-hmm. It's up to you to make it as simple as possible. And that's why I say the tip of the spear message. What's what's the biggest service you have that gets the most conversation started? Start there. Okay, this is what I do for you. I would imagine it's, uh, you know, that's your seat or is the reviews seat. Um, but if you started out and you're like, I am the review. If you are struggling with reviews, that's where I come in. That's what I help businesses do that. But that opens the door to a whole myriad of other things that you do, mm-hmm. right? That's the right. conversation starter. Is it yes. always the case like that for you? Mm, no. No. No, and you know, I had... When I first joined the group, I had just a special seat for reviews, but I switched to the digital marketing seat, but I still talk about the reviews the most because that is the easiest thing for people to grasp. Right. Um, you know, communications as a whole is is so nebulous and it is not an easy thing to grasp. Nebulous. Um, I'm going to look that up. Go ahead. Keep talking. <laughs> and... Um, uh, so anyway, the, getting people in the door with me through reviews is the easier route. Oftentimes, it's, right? You know, because it's 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 not expensive. It and it is a very tangible thing. Tangible. I mean, it's not it's not literally tangible, but it feels tangible um, to small businesses when they see those those reviews coming in. It's very quantifiable. Um, where a lot of the communications piece and the branding piece, it's not quantifiable. What's typically often a business owner doing? That, you know, if they're getting a string, uh, a steady stream of bad or mediocre reviews. That's a good question. And again, that's something that, you know, if you don't know the business. Mm-hmm. So, let's, uh, for example, let's say you know a car dealership. You know they're good, but they're getting threes and fours, yeah. right? I actually got this on my plate right now. Really? And yeah, and so I was What's thinking about issue? it this morning. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what I think is the issue. Um, and I haven't even I haven't even talked with this client about it. Mm-hmm. Um, is I don't know if I don't know if they're bothered by this yet, but I'm bothered about it for them in that they have had they are a good business. I've even even just this past week used their services um, at my investment property. So I know I mean, I had a wonderful experience with them, very communicative, very professional. Um, and I know I know a lot of people in their business. Um, and so and and it's never really it's never really the people that come out as the issue in the um, negative feedback, but it is it has most recently been a pricing complaint. Right. And and my thought is that this is and it's probably going to start happening to a lot of us hmm. in that as, as the recession, and I put air quotes on that. So if you're not watching it, the recession, <laughs> I, you know, I think, right. You know, we are probably in the midst of that right now. Could right. Yeah. We don't, whatever it mm-hmm. is what it is. But if you read the news and I don't ironically read a whole lot of news coming from a PR background, there's reasons beyond the recent world it's that I don't read it. It's bad stuff to marinate your mind yeah. in. Yeah. Um, you can create your own reality in any way, shape, or form that you want to. <laughs> um, and at the end of the day, news is a business. Mm-hmm. And so your eyeball, your eyeballs are what is making them money, clicks and eyes. And so, you know, fear sells and drama sells. And so that's what gets pushed more. Drama a, feeds their mama. Yep. That, that right. is so true. But that's a whole conversation in and of itself. But anyway... As the recession becomes something that you see in the headlines more and more, and I almost get almost all of my news from LinkedIn on that little trending topics bar on the right hand side. That's typically positive news. Yeah, but you right? see that. But almost every day that you sign in now, 
Um, and I'm there for networking, business, and some things for clients. Yeah. So I have no, I, I can't not get on LinkedIn. I think I can scrub that part of it in some way, shape, or form. But anyway, every time you sign in, there is there is a there's layoffs, there's downsizing, um, doom, and, and there's doom, yes. and and there's recession. I mean, there's almost something trending on that every single day on that right hand side. So, and I've been thinking about it in this respect as as that headline becomes more and more frequent people are going to start to react to that subconsciously. And so what I see happening with this client of mine is that now this pricing issue, and they're not the cheapest in town for what they do, which is fine, but they do a high high quality, high customer service. Um, and so they can charge that. I don't know. I mean, they were, they were beyond helpful when I had them come out and I learned something from them. Um, they educated me on two different things in, in my rental property while they were there. Um, so it was well worth everything I paid. Um, but I think that people are going to be more complainy about pricing as we continue to see those headlines. And so, so in my review system, the way I have it set up is there is an option to capture that negative feedback before somebody has the opportunity to circumvent the ask and go out to Google, right? So mm -hmm. the idea is, is if every time you had a client come through, um, you, you should go out and ask them as soon as possible for their feedback, whether it's a thumbs up, we had a great experience, or a thumbs down negative experience. If they click thumbs up, then they go leave their review. If they click thumbs down, then they can come to the business and talk about what, what has gone wrong. Okay? So before it gets published to the public, the business owner has Correct. a opportunity to, okay, what do That's we need correct. to do here? That's correct. Right. So, but there's, the reviewer always has the option to click through just because of, you know, legality. You need, need to, you can't, re, you can't gate the review. Mm -hmm. So there's always a link present that they can go ahead and, and go, go straight to the review site and leave that review. I've never had somebody circumvent that, um, that ask. Okay. So when you're asking for feedback, I've never had somebody say, uh, okay, no, I had a terrible experience, but I'm just going to go around this ask and go leave the negative review. But what I have had for this client is people are getting out to Google because they're, they're teed off about the pricing or what have you. They're getting out to Google before we get the ask out to them. And so I think that for this particular instance, we have to have faster asks out the door so that we can catch these folks before they go on their own volition to, to leave the review. Yeah. Um, and especially in a climate where people are becoming more and more sensitive to pricing or feeling that they've been wronged. I, I could see that, but I'm thinking about the technology of that, you know, you use the term somewhat gating, but mm -hmm. you, you don't want to do that. You, you want their ability yeah. to go out you know, but hey, it's kind of like you can't gate that. Hey, do you want to before you roast this person? Do you want to be a prick, or mm -hmm. you know, do you? Can we talk about this? Yeah, that's kind of what you're asking them. Absolutely, right? and it gives them that it gives them that outlet to get that off their chest. Yeah, have their keyboard warrior moment. Um, and maybe engage with the, you know, hey, you, you wronged me. Yeah, uh, what are we going to do about yeah. this? Yeah, but if the yeah. business can pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, you're right. Yeah. That shouldn't have happened or whatever. That diffuses the situation 99% yeah. of the time. When I sold cars, I used to tee up customers for uh, reviews and surveys and things of that nature. And I would say, look, you know, if there's any reason why you can't give us all tens and yeses on the review, and I would say tens and yeses at least five times yeah. in a 60 second conversation just to kind of prime them. You know, I would always say, look, if there's any reason why you cannot give me all tens and yeses, talk to me first yeah. and let us know what we can do to make them all tens and yeses. <clears throat> it may not be able to happen, but you know, uh, we can figure something out. I think typically is what happens, but you know, and at that point, you know, whether or not they're going to do that for you. Yeah. And that gives you, know, you good feedback too. They'll right? either look at you like, you know, okay. Or the, no, dude, you got nothing to worry about. We loved it, which is typically what I would get, Yeah, you know, but that's how I conducted myself. Not necessarily everybody in the dealership. But with that being said, <clears throat> what's your problem? Here we are once again. So vibey. What is your problem? What are you dealing with these days? <sighs> well, I thought about this the whole drive here. Because the last thing, when, when I was on here last time, I talked about my time and my lack thereof. Mm-hmm. 
um, and balancing family life and my kids and my business. And I have since, so I, I've made a, a stride in the right direction. I have since hired help. So it's not just me doing all of my things, um, which is good. Was there a learning curve with the people you hired? Um, you know, it's no, no, mm -hmm. it's not my first rodeo in hiring and vetting and kind of, you know, lining up what, what needs to happen in a role. Um, and so, so far so good. Yeah. Knock on wood, you know, but people are people and, and I'm a people too. So there's, there's bound to be error. Right. Um, but that's worked out well and it has freed me up for other opportunities mm -hmm. in, in projects and growth. Um, so I guess that's not really a problem per se in the same way. Plus, you know, to use the word try it again, it's just, you know, time management or lack thereof is, and that's a trite problem to have. So now I have to come up with a new problem. <laughs> Which is What's kept you up in the last couple of nights? Anything? Kids screaming, crying. Yeah, everybody. actually, yeah. <laughs> it's the kids that keep me up at night. <laughs> it's the damn kids. It's well, always um, the kids. Yeah, one had a bad dream, and then the other one just refuses to sleep through the night just because that's his personality. So, The um, scalability of business is a very common problem. Yeah. And I'm glad that you, you know, based maybe based on our conversation that we had, that you took action and found somebody to, to help you out. That's the exact problem I'm yeah. having. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm spread thin. Yeah. So. You know, and then I guess it's the scaling part is now the, so I've, I now don't have enough on this person's plate, but mm -hmm. went ahead and just kind of booked out that time, right? So that I can continue to sell um, primarily what I'm, what I'm selling in BNI, which is the kind of the achievable small business, social media and reviews marketing packages. Um, and then, um, and, and I manage all of those on the front end, um, but have her help in in producing and um, and just keeping up with the management piece of it because otherwise I was, you know, at the point where I was starting to forget to schedule things. And, yeah, you yeah. Know. You start, you, you, you're in and on your business. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of how, where I am. And finding somebody, and I feel like, I, I get ahead of myself because I feel like uh, to do what I do, it takes a special skill set. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I need somebody who can do video editing and edit these clips because I got more and more customers that are coming on that want clip production every single week. Yeah. And that, you know, training them, the customer and the client that if we're going to be doing this and we're not actively there during the recording of the podcast, then you got to give me the time code and you got to give me the context of what you're pulling of yeah. what you want pulled. Okay. What are you talking about? You know, even go as far as saying, Hey, I start with this phrase and I, and I want it to end with this phrase. This is where I hammer it home. And in the middle, let's just condense it down to a 60 second. And that's where the journalistic talent really comes into play. Mm -hmm. Not only being able to uh, listen to something as a journalistic mindset, knowing, okay, I can pull that. That's gold. That's gold. That's gold. And know, you know, identifying the sound bites as clips. Yeah. That takes a talent. It does. And it is teachable. It's just one more thing mm -hmm. to do, you know, mm -hmm. and I think I have a lot of opportunity with young people coming up that want to it's it's not a hard uh, genre to staff because I think a lot of people like the digital production, mm -hmm. content creation, audio production, video production, that element of it. But it's like, guys, we got to I don't know. We just got to find somebody. Yeah. Well, yeah. and there's there's a, there's a level of um, maybe business experience, too of learning what is relevant to an audience or to a specific business yeah. from a conversation piece. Right. You know, I mean, if you're totally fresh and green, there's just, there's just a lot you don't yet know. Right. So, I mean, soundbite wise, if we had to come up with three things a business owner can do to right away uh, improve his reviews or their reviews or her reviews, three things to, Improve yeah. your reviews you, right out of the can gate. Can you rip out three things right now off the top of your head? Yeah. Provide yeah. an excellent customer experience Boom. with clear communication. Mm -hmm. um, clear communication on timing, pricing, and what they can expect. And then communicate what they got afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if you've got all that buttoned up, it's very easy to have a lot of high star reviews coming in the door. Um, and then all you need to do after that is consist have a, a system in place where you're consistently asking for reviews or feedback. Um, and that ask needs to be one or two sentences long and it needs to not be attached to any other piece of business. Do not put it 
with an invoice. Do not put it um, with a thank you. Huh. No, it is just a, it is, it is simply, Hey, we are, we're, we're, you know, working on our business, growing our business. You can help us help others. Please leave a, you know, please let us know how your experience was. It's a very short ask. And there are three, there are three follow-ups to that, or there's one ask and then two follow-ups. Um, but cause by and large people will forget to do it. Even if they see it come through and they're like, Oh yeah, I'll leave a review. I'll give you a thumbs up. You know, I can see in, in my system that a, a lot of people will click through thumbs up and then when they get the ask again in three days, then they go through it again. And then that time they'll make it all the way to Google and leave the review. So it takes people more than one ask to do it. Repetition, it, mm -hmm, yep. frequency. Yeah. That's right. And to have it just solely be about the review and not about any other piece of business is also the other key to that. Right on. So those, those are three things right there. Yeah. Make there sure that go. your communication is clear. Um, and that you're providing an excellent experience for folks and reminding them of what they got, which is part of the clear communication piece. And then make your asks and make your asks simple and direct. There we go. Boom. It's almost like you could have a podcast. You know, I've really it's it. somebody. Have you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What would it be called? I have no idea. <laughs> That's a weird name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the I Have No Idea podcast no idea. with yeah. Ashley Bryan. That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, you can play on your last name. Yeah. I the Bright Ideas can. podcast. I don't yeah. know, something like that. You yeah. Know? It's probably already taken, though, because <sighs> Bright is a very that, common last name, which is, you know. Really? You're the first I've heard of it. No, I'm sorry. Second. Exactly. <clears throat> I knew a Jeffrey Bright in yeah. high school. Um, I, I find it funny that a lot of people get in their own way with pod. Well, I want to do a sales and business podcast, but there are so many other people out there doing it. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Do it. There's just a ton of people doing everything. Yeah. It's, nothing, it's not nothing you. new under the sun. That's right. What would you talk about on your podcast? That's a good question. I've thought about, you know, it could be how do businesses tell their stories on, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like a a bit of a guide for, for small businesses so that they can implement things themselves. I'm all about teaching and um, and kind of empowering people to, to do it themselves. Um or I've thought about even in kind of a separate realm, one that's maybe more centered on um, building businesses. Uh, you know, it's, I guess it's like maybe a, a, a cross between business, business, I was going to say businessing. <laughs> it's, I was going to say it, parenting. Yeah. <laughs> parenting. And so, so building a business and raising a, a young family at the same time, um, since both my husband and I are we're both entrepreneurs. Right. Um, and we do get that question from time to time, especially from other people around our, our age and stage in life of how do you have two unconventional careers, but also children? Because there seems to be this, um, there seems to be this, what do, how do you call it? Like this preconception that somebody has to have the stable job. Mm -hmm. And like, what is yeah. that anyway? Like, what, what is a stable job? Really, they if you've they got, don't exist. They don't. And yeah. if you've got one stream of income or one mainstream of income, it's You're actually kind of risky. It's very risky. Because what yeah. happens when and somebody else is in control of that, right? So mm -hmm. my husband and I have kind of had this, you know, this uh, vision, I guess, in that, you know, to have multiple streams through a lot of different places between the two of us, that's our security point. And to have benefits, it depends what your definition of benefits are anyway, too. Our benefit is you know, the freedom. freedom to choose yeah. how yeah. we, how we structure our life. And the fact that when my son gets out on early dismissal today, um, from elementary school, I don't have to tell anybody that at one fifty three I'm done for the day. That was my story. It was nice yeah. to be able to, I told my wife in 2016, the last job I had, I was on my way home, um, from that job. Uh, I said, I'm tired of people telling me where to be, yeah. what time to be there, how much I can make. Yep. Um, you know, I, I want to meet my own expectations and I want to take vacation on my timetable, not theirs, Yeah, you know, and be able to take time off. If I want to do that kind of thing, I can. And of course there's limits to it. You still, being your own boss is not, <clears throat> not what people think yeah. it is. You yeah. still have bosses. You still have clients. clients. You gotta, that's what puts the butter on the bread. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so over time, you got to realize that it's not that cut and dry. Yeah. <clears throat> but it is more freeing because you have much more flexible, as flexible as you want it to be. Yeah. But you talking about the anomaly of the um, uh, the multiple income streams, <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, hey, I want a passive income stream. <laughs> passive is never as passive no, as you think it is. Not. You, you just mentioned an investment property. Yeah. 
It's not, it's not, hey, I just collect rent checks. Correct. You got to be out there if things break. Yeah. If they're not paying rent on time. Yeah. And this you know. is our first one, which is something we've been working towards for a while. And we're very excited about it. But, right. um, what'd you end up the, uh, just a condo or townhouse? Yeah, it's a townhouse. Yeah. So just one single unit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even that's at risk. Yeah. You know, yep. if you don't have a rented out, you got to pay that mortgage. Yeah, I know. Right. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> but is it mostly Airbnb kind of thing? No, we're going to do like a, a long term. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, but it, you know, it needed, it was in really good shape, but it just needed some TLC. Well, we, you know, completely grossly underestimated the time that it takes to, you know, even just paint an entire townhouse. Right. You know, stuff spend like your that, weekends so. there, all well, that stuff, yeah, free then, time. And then some, yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's, it's a far cry from passive, but you know, if you build up enough of a critical mass of that type of a portfolio, over time, the yeah, management is, yeah. companies involved, that kind yeah. of thing. But the first properties, all those, all I've always heard is the hardest. It's the hardest to get the the loan hung on. Mm-hmm. It's hardest, you know, you're doing all the the legwork, uh, not reminding you. I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna rent it out in this market like that. You As know I that. start crying, right? <laughs> Keep going. Jim. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't mean to bring your world down, uh, but I mean that's a Cardone thing. He talks about it's better to to own multiple doors than just one because you know. And I tell my kids, I tell people that work for me that you know if you want to fund your lifestyle. Uh, we had this conversation with my daughter, daughter the other night. She's in 11th grade. Well, what are we doing? Are you going to college? What do you want to do? She's yeah. like, I don't really know. I said, well, you're going to do something. I, you know, We've always said you don't have to go to college, yeah. but you're going to work. And I don't mean work at Kohl's. I don't mean work at Target. I want you to right. do something where you're going to learn something. It's going to be your college education. That means you're going to sell something. I don't care if it's mortgages, if it's mm-hmm. roofing, if mm-hmm. it's solar, cars, whatever. Okay, I want you to learn how to sell. And if you really get good at it, even if you hate it, because you're going to not like stuff, you're going to fall on your face, you're going to realize, oh my God, this is awful. Yeah. That should only motivate you to, okay, what can I do? What can I? What joy can I find in this job and just cling to that? I said, because once you do find that, other joys will reveal themselves. Yeah. Especially as you learn what you're doing. And maybe you you fall in love with the job. Who knows? Or you just realize that it's a means to an end. Yeah. Okay? So, or as long as it's just paid learning. Right. right you know. Right. And, it, and in some cases, it can be really good pay. And I would say, look, if you're doing that and you're living with mom and dad, I'm not charging your rent. I would rather see you just sock it all away. By the time you're 24, 25, I hope you have a quarter million dollars. Because you know what? I'll go in with you. <clears throat> and we'll buy a, you know, it'll be my first time, maybe. It'll be your first time. We find a multiplex, right? 16 units. Hey, you want to move out? There you go. Yeah. Now you don't have to pay anything. Yeah. Because other people are going to be paying your rent. That'd be oh, sweet. by the way, hey, the unit next door just got vacated. Why don't we knock the doors down? Now I got twice the size and still the rest of the building's paying my rent. You know, wash, rinse, repeat. And I said, by the time you're 30 years old, dude. You're done. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're funding your lifestyle. Yeah. You know? I told her, uh, you know, she wants to be an actress or get involved with Broadway. I said, I get it. Uh, there's never a too late in that kind of game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's better to get up there and try and do it if you can, but you still got to fund the lifestyle, you know? Yeah. So, but I'm glad you're doing that with the investment property. Don't get overwhelmed. You're going to rent that thing out like that Thanks. in this market. That's what my mom told me this morning too. Yeah. yeah. Are you really worried about that? No, I'm not. I'm not legitimately concerned about it, but until I have that, tied up it's still it's one more thing you gotta buy. yeah it's yeah. still out there you know but uh, you know it's all marketing it is i got some sweet photos i've got a nice description i've looked at all the other units in that complex area my description's better mm-hmm. my photos are better right it'll rent it'll attract somebody yeah and yeah. My brother's making me a sweet walkthrough video as we speak. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Maybe I need to talk to him and hire him for yeah, clips. There you, you go. Know? That would be a good referral. Um, we actually came back from Gulf Shores. One of the things that we talked about, my wife and I, I said, you know, I wouldn't mind buying a place down here. Mm-hmm. We've you talked know? about that too. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, again, it's got its issues. And our the condo that we rented, toilet overflowed twice. Yep. You know, and I'm sitting there wondering, I'm like, oh my gosh, are they going to hold me responsible for this? Yeah. And it was all, you know, it wasn't, poop water it was clear the toilet just happened to run and something got clogged way down the line and we didn't notice and there yeah. you go yeah we decided we we kicked around you know some sort of a you know florida or beach property and we'd probably still like to do that one day but we thought you know just for like getting started it should yeah. probably be something that we can really get our hands on and understand what we're doing 
before we, you know, try to do something that's eight hours away. There's jumping in the deep end and then there's jumping in like where the stairs are, right? <laughs> With yeah. your, you know, you know, you're going to hit the bottom, but at least you're landing yeah, on your feet. Yeah, I can see the bottom right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of what you did. Very inspiring to me because, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a late age in life. I got to figure that out. At some point, we're going to start getting in the mindset of investment properties and stuff. So, yeah, well. but it's it's been a, it's been a whole thing. But yeah. it's, it's exciting. <laughs> but like you said with the marketing background, do you that's, you know, 70% of the battle. That's 75. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. I, I think you're going to rent it out in no time. Mark my words. How yeah. do people find and follow you? You got the website all uh, with all the links on it and yeah. social medias? Yeah, yep, yep. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my own social media is not that great, but I'm working on it because mm-hmm. I've now I've got help. So yeah, stay. How do we turn you into personal brand using your RBF? That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Because there's a guy on TikTok called the Straight Faced Guy. Yeah, and it's just him looking back at the camera. It could be over his shoulder. It could be directly at the camera, and he's just sitting there deadpan the whole time while he's on roller coasters. That's fantastic. It's hilarious, and he's just sitting there. He's not breaking character. He's just. Mm. He's just looking at the camera like, yeah, I need some sort well, of. Well, he's just being thrown around in the. You can maybe you can help me think think through this. Um, I need some sort of you know platform that uh, that people maybe I should just judging Ashley. Yeah, yeah. People can pay you to judge things, and yeah. you just sit there and just go. You, you, it's like you just, you just or, look at the camera and it's going to go. Mm-mm. But does that let people know that I'm not that I'm not scary? Well, look at Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Remember Grumpy Cat? I do, I do. <laughs> but Grumpy Cat was really grumpy. But you know, I mean, dude, when you dead. when you Rest first in came peace. in, I mean, you, your RBF was on par. Really? It was, oh my gosh! Yeah, I can't control it, Jim. No, I'm sorry. it's it, it's not. I'm not. It, it's it's an observation I made, but it, it was uh, it softened over time. I can't you know? walk around with a permagrin on. That's not me. <laughs> I'm I'm not that girl. It's not going to happen. But was your guard up in the beginning anyway at BNI a little bit at all? Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you got to uh, you ease into it, right? That's right. Yeah. So you do you want people to follow you and you know forward digital marketing Yeah, yeah. Or? It's it's uh it's FWD mm-hmm. digital. So two d- two d's in a row. Right. Forward digital dot marketing is my website. Do you have a link tree for the personal branding? I don't. No, you should. I've got no personal branding going on. You should. Zero. Judging you know, Ashley. For, uh, judging Ashley. That'd be great. For a while, I was I was working on some some twittering, um, and that's <laughs> that's at at Ashley A. Bright. Um, but I just stopped in October. I just stopped writing on the twitters. Yeah. Just to focus on some other things. I get it. Essentialism, as it were. Um, but yeah, it's on. And then you know, LinkedIn, same backslash Ashley A. Bright. LinkedIn is tough to correct. Yeah, it is. That's a tough nut to crack. It is. That takes a lot of posting, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and spe- and strategic engagement. <clears throat> strategic. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? So if you and and I've I had this happen to me a couple weeks ago. If right. you can find an an account that already has a large following in your niche, um, and so this works more kind of in the personal branding space than it would like a a, a true B two B. Um, and you are one of the first few comments with an insightful comment on on a post, uh, you can pick up um, 10, 20 followers. Really? In, yeah, in, in just like a day. Huh. Yeah. That's something I need to look into. Mm-hmm. Voiceover and podcasting. Yeah. Rooms. Mm-hmm. Voiceover, I tell you, man, that really does get me a lot of engagement. Whenever I show a an actuality video of me voicing something, yeah, because it's it's it's, it's fun because it it you hear that type of voice on the radio. You're used to just you hearing it, it, but you you never yeah. see the face that goes with it. That was like the first time in uh, Connecticut. I heard uh, I always heard the voice guy for the radio station. There, there's always uh, two style well more than two styles of voiceover but one of them is promos and radio imaging television imaging and it would always be these guys uh that was you know we had a guy named doug paul at the time for the radio station and he would record all of the lines we would write for him <clears throat> on a reel-to-reel tape and send it to us this is back in reel-to-reel days so his hard copy that he would record in his studio would come by mail to us after we sat on the phone with him and yeah. directed him through a session and he charged us, I don't know, two grand a month 
for however many pages that we were doing with him. And it was amazing to me to hear the outtakes and him just being a normal guy. Because all I heard up until that point were the produced pieces that played between the songs of The Home of Rock and Roll, I-95, WRKI, Brookfield, Danbury, and his being on. Yeah. And then when you actually hear the raw cut and you hear him like, I'm not sure how I like the, that last take. Let me try it again. You know, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is really a real person. Yeah. Yeah, you forget. Yeah, Don wild. LaFontaine, the in a world guy, was uh, a real guy. Yeah. That just had, you know, gargle with uh, razor blades. <laughs> but there you go. FWDdigital.com. Right. Check out Ashley. Follow along and uh, engage with her. If you're in need of uh, better reviews, take heed. Heed her warnings and reach out to her and see if she can help you. She's going to be selective yeah. and she's going to judge what, she, what you're doing. Judging Ashley. Totally judging. But that's okay. You know what you're talking about, and you've earned the place to judge. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Thanks for being on. Really appreciate it. Go to whatsyourproblempodcast.com and give us a five-star rating. If we don't deserve a five-star, reach out. Let me know how I can make it a five-star, or just leave a three-star or whatever. No, don't leave the three-star. Don't leave the three-star? No. I say I don't care if it's a one-star or five-star. Just leave a rating. That, not <laughs> five good? stars only. Five stars only? Yeah. Don't you find, though, if it's too many five stars, it's like, okay, it's too good to be yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. it is true. You do want a little sprinkle of a four yeah. where somebody was just maybe a little disgruntled because right. it was slow, something like I that. I don't know how I'm going to, you know. Leave a four. I'll leave a four later today just to kind of like mix you up. <laughs> I put a picture next to it of you just yeah. looking at the camera like. <laughs> judging. <laughs> judging. I've judged this podcast at a four star. That would be hilarious. And then put, you know, hashtag, if you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That would be very funny. Keep your eyes peeled later. I wouldn't be a bit uh, miffed if you did that. Okay. You know, especially since I scared you with telling you that you got a mortgage to pay on your new investment property. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my retribution. Yep. Thank you, Ashley, for coming out here. Thanks, Always a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk to you later.